And here we go. This is Flash at 20% off on this 4th of April, 2019 by the clock on the computer here. So I'm going to see if I'm coming loud and clear to the RLM. It didn't post me. Hmm. Let us see what I did wrong. Did I go live or am I Memorex? Ah, there I am. I have come to the face of the real liberty media dot com. Now I'm going to say hey to everybody and quit fucking around. <clears throat> cough, 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 cough. <coughs> hey, everybody at Real Liberty Media, especially the grim nerd, the Nazi that runs the entire shebang. He has total control. <laughs> anyway, just having a giggle with you. Cirque started it. Blame her. It's her fault. Anyway, I'm going to say hi to the bots and the bodies in the real liberty media.com chat, the headquarters of all our insane radio podcasts and other things that we do on this site. There's plenty to do on it, I'll tell you that. Anyway, we have at the top of the list here barman cowboy tech kct grimnir moose girl who is probably at work slaving for the man and then we got miss kate brackets dc anti asmo chelsea i be don c java doctor two master brow i thought he went to work too what is this everybody's leaving their stuff running Hey, Vinny Pondergander, Rain, Rob Works, Romes, Vanna White, Vin E, Weather Dork, Z Beths Z, Phantom, and well then, Beetle Circle, hello honey, Colfax 101, Cyborg Noodle, Dakota, me, Frumpy 2, Gromit, Java Doctor underscore J's, Nines, J's, Cozy U, Carl Marx, the new bot. <laughs> Kiss, mm, Pone Sauce, Sock Puppet, and Salamo. I say Salamo. That sounds better to me, to my, you know, to say it. Salamo is too many syllables. Slamo is kind of cool. Anyway, that's the lineup in the electronic room with no walls no tables no alcohol no weed no nothing but we're all here in it somehow <laughs> you figured that one out and send me a full report i want it on my desk by 8 a.m got it good now this uh 20 percent off i've been trying to run with a Serious topic. Not be so clowny about the whole damn thing. But I like to play around on the radio. Let's not, you know, let's not make any false premises here. Promises. But on this particular show, I wanted to give a little serious, a little try and see if it actually worked for me or not. <coughs> now, I got a thumbs up from the wife for doing it. So uh, I'm going to continue what I've been doing, and see where it goes. But the the theme of the series I'm doing, I don't know how long I'm going to go on with this, so I might stop it tonight and start something new next week. I have no idea. But the Control Games Part 3. And I was asking Rob, I was looking for him for a couple of days, when, and when I saw him, I kept forgetting when I saw him, Hey, Rob, send me some stuff to read because his taste in what I read is better than my taste in what I read. I got uh, good comments from Cirque about the stuff I read that Rob sent me. She said, yeah, you ought to do that more often. But my luck with finding links that other people like is hmm, it's minimal. I, I don't do very well in pleasing the other people of the world. Anyway, so first thing I'm going to try reading here tonight on 20% off is something my wife sent me called Introduction to Voluntarism. 
and it's uh, August the 24th, 2013, and it was in, I guess, the category called Anarchy. Ooh, those dirty, filthy hippies and their freedom. What are we going to do? Anyway, to begin this epic story, uh, the following is a post by guest author Peter Miller. Ah, and it begins. In this essay, I will discuss the philosophy of voluntarianism. It's hard to read, though. I don't use that word very often. In section one, I will explain the basic principles of this philosophy. Then in section two, I will discuss some of the more controversial logical conclusions of the philosophy. In section three, I will provide some responses to common objections that people raise to voluntarism, and I will wrap it all up in section four with some general comments on the future of voluntarism. What a word. Okay, now number one, and you, I think Cirque posted it. You should probably repost it if you ask her real nice. And it says here in plain English, what is voluntarism? Conceptually, voluntarism is a very simple moral philosophy. It is the basic proposition that all human interaction should be directly consensual. And for those of you that don't know what consensual means, you're doing it wrong. Voluntarism rejects the initiation of force in all its various forms, including physical violence, threats of violence, theft, bullying, slavery, rape, murder, etc. However, unlike pacifism, voluntarism does not, I can't read that word, this is too fun, does not bar the victim of coercion from responding in a strictly self-defensive manner. And voluntarism completely rejects any attempts to construe offense as defense. Ooh, clever people. I like these voluntarists already. I hope I meet a lot of them. Such as the phrase, the best defense is a good offense. Depends on what you're playing. Sometimes you're just better off to just go wipe them off the whole fucking board and get them out of your way so you can take all their shit without a fight. Oh, whoops, I'm being American about it again. Sorry, folks. <laughs> Lost my mind. Anyway, finally, and his, and this barely needs mentioning, but for the sake of providing a complete definition, I will include it. Voluntarism does not discriminate on race, gender, age, sexual orientation, or physical or mental ability. Wow, just that last line. Boy, they chop us up in any smaller little kind of groups, and there won't be any unity in anything ever again. I don't see it now, to be honest with you. Uh, outside of a small place. If you're in a big place, nah. You're just going to be scrapping it out for supremacy because somebody's better than the other guy. <laughs> That's how it works. They keep us pitted against each other, so we'll constantly be in, in that little fear. You know, right? I've talked about the wavelengths that I discovered on the interwebs one time a couple years ago. And it describes the wavelength of fear as being thin and narrow and it it traps you. There's no room in there to, to grow, so you're stuck in this like a little tube. <laughs> and the uh, that's the fear one. Now, the love one is wide and vast, and you can do a lot of stuff inside that wavelength. But then again, it does go to back to some things are better when they're big, and some things are better when they're small. Apparently, emotions... The small one is the one you want to avoid because it's the confinement of it, I suppose. I mean, if you want a physical explanation for what I thought of, I thought being compressed into like a 
you know, a wire that carries all this information over the internet. But if you tried to compress me through that wire, it would end badly for me. I'd be a spot. Anyway, back to the exciting story of voluntaryism on 20% off tonight. Number two, <laughs> some controversial conclusions of voluntaryism. Based on the above definitions, most people would agree that Voluntarism is a moral philosophy worth upholding. However, in my experience, mo I lost my place. Almost all of these people will alter their stance and completely reject voluntarism when they discover what the logical conclusions of voluntarism entail. Well, that was a how I don't know if I read that properly. Anyway, here I will list and briefly discuss some of the logical conclusions which people typically find controversial. Hmm. Uh, wow, how can you not find something controversial? Everything's controversial. Hmm. Okay, back to the story. The uncoerced passage of goods between seller and buyer is one of the most important consequences of the voluntarist philosophy. philosophy. For the exchange to be voluntary, both parties must be free to set their own terms for the exchange. The seller must be free to charge any price, and the buyer must be free to request any price. Uh, so far, so good. Both parties must be free to reject the other party's price, and indeed, the whole trade if desired. Obviously, theft is the polar opposite of this voluntary arrangement and therefore is completely rejected under voluntarism. Wow, this is so simple. A child should be, I mean, except for the fancy wording, they could have used uh, simpler wording to explain this very simple concept because it sounds like the basic don't do anything you don't want me to do to you to me, because I'd do it to you. And if you do it and you miss, I'm going to do it twice. <laughs> I'm just kidding around. Anyway, where was I in my epic story? I was at, if the seller fears that the buyer may use the exchange goods for a purpose which he, the seller, does not personally agree with, then, according to the voluntarist philosophy, the seller is completely justified in refusing to trade. For example, the seller might fear that the buyer would use the weapons he sells to attack innocent people. Well, what other kind of people are you going to attack? Anyway, in which case, he would be free to boycott the deal. Likewise, someone may buy a house, then discover that there are marijuana plants growing in the garden. If this person does not approve of the use of marijuana, then, according to the voluntarist philosophy, there is no requirement to sell the plants, even if doing so would be profitable. Hmm. Okay, no requirement. Yeah, see that freedom thing. Really? Well, the way this is written is just, I don't know, a little confusing to me out loud. This is probably one of those things I should have read first, instead, but I never do. I just read a headline and think, well, let's find out what this crazy stuff's about. And unfortunately... Uh, see how far this goes on. Looks like it's a lengthy little thing. It's given me a million ideas. But I don't know if it's translating very well to the, you know, 20% crowd that I usually hang in. Most of these people know this, the anarchy thing inside out. And the three that don't, they're not interested. So, hmm. I'm preaching to the choir and unless somebody picks up the show that's never heard it before, <laughs> then you're in for a surprise. I don't know. 
but we're uh, we're uh, oddly uncomfortable with the story because of the the simplicity of the idea, but the complication of the way they wrote it. So I'm gonna try to read some more on to this. It's definitely worth knowing. If you don't already know it, you should know it. And if you don't already know it, I don't know how you could have missed this in life because life is so obviously much easier to get through if you're not held hostage against your will and forced to do shit. You know, if I had ever thought in my business dealings in life that I was threatened or held hostage or being treated like shit, I would walk. There was no way. I wouldn't even get involved with people that I didn't feel comfortable around. What was the point? There's plenty of businesses in this world to deal with. There's a never-ending dollar to be chased out in the streets of the world. So, hmm. anyway, let me try to continue with this story and see if it doesn't rattle my brain. Voluntarism sports the acquisition of any weapon for defensive purposes and denies the legitimacy of a third party to interfere in a trade of such goods. See, weapons, I'm not real big on all this weapon shit. And then, eh, no, but then they'll attack us and we'll be defenseless. Right, well, you get what you pay for. Ownership and use of drugs and it says alcohol, caffeine, tobacco, heroin, <laughs> for example, are, uh, I don't know how they can put tobacco and heroin in the same sentence. I mean, wow. One kills you slowly, and the other one is not fucking around about time. It'll take you out in a heartbeat. But they're comparing these kind of addictions together like they're two of a kind, and they're truly not. Like alcohol or caffeine. They're all bad for you, but depending on the amount you use and under what situation you're dealing with and all this other variable shit, you can survive all that stuff. So, I don't know. I get a little uh, tiffed when they make things seem to me that that's more than it should be. It's not not the same. Anyway, I'll start the sentence over because I got on a, on a tyrant about that one. Ownership and use of drugs are unrelated to coercion and is therefore fully permissible under the voluntarist philosophy. Therefore, voluntarism does not permit a third party to interfere against the wishes of the buyer and seller in drug trades. Wow. See, it sounds like a, you're opening up a can of worms, but in the long run, if both parties aren't being dishonest, then maybe both parties aren't being dishonest, and something like this would work better. But what we've got, what things turned into is backdoor deals and let's tell them this, but do that. And on and on and on we go. We'll just tell them it's good for their teeth. They don't know how to read. They won't figure this out for 30 or 40 years. And by that point, we'll all be dead anyway. Who gives a shit? And that's how society works. They poison you with one thing and by the time you figured it out you go back looking for the fuckers that did it oh they're dead so now what you can't do nothing about it you just challenge the next piece of shit problem that they threw at you yeah it here the first word <laughs> back to the story taxes are a form of involuntary exchange and are synonymous with theft Nah, you're talking. Without the initiation of force, taxes would cease to exist. Taxes are not subject to voluntary negotiation between buyer and seller, but rather they consist of a third party, party forcefully intervening in a transaction 
to extract an arbitrary amount. Wow. As this is one of the hardest can concepts for newcomers to, oh, okay, to voluntarism to understand, I will devote a large portion of the Section 3 to responding to common objections to the claim that taxation is theft. And I'll tell you, that's a staple around the RLM chat. I, I'm going to break to the chat for a minute here and give my brain a, a second to catch up. Because the story is getting better now. I was a little worried I was reading it. And I wasn't following it along as well as I felt I should. Now I must have hit something I like to read about. Because now I'm in, I'm in second gear. <laughs> anyway, I was just checking. The chatty room is quiet. But it's uh, 2 o'clock. Let's see. I start this at 2 o'clock on the East Coast. So there's probably nobody around <laughs> this time of day. People are busy trying to live and get shit done. Anyway, back to this uh, <laughs> strange little uh, strange little link that my wife sent me for something to read on. 20% off tonight. <laughs> uh, freedom Bombs, as was briefly mentioned in the first definitions section, Voluntarism can be distinguished from pass, pacifism in that wow, these ism words are killing me. In that voluntarism permits self defense while pacifism does not. Wow, that's just lameism. Uh, but see I don't know how to explain this part to anybody else, but I think you get to a point in life where violence, you can just turn that shit off and it doesn't look for you. You don't look for it. You don't cross paths anymore. But there are kind of rules to it. You know, you have to be sensible and not expect to be able to walk down the middle of the street at six o'clock at night, not get hit by a car with your hand over your eyes. I mean, not insanity, but just, uh, I don't know. Things could... Uh, Things happen and things don't happen. But I think deep down inside of us, we draw the the experiences we get from what we know. And we're looking for these things and that's what we find because that's what we're looking for. So as I got older, I think I sharpened my ability to find something in life <laughs> and it wasn't so chaotic and happenstance but for a lot of years i i enjoyed the chaotic and the happenstance now not so much <laughs> but i'm still a voluntarist anarchist scum um, i don't want to abide by the rules of commerce it's not the rules of society that bother me and it's common sense you know be nice to people. Don't attack strangers with baseball bats for, you know, the trying to make $5. Stupid things don't belong in, in your daily life. You don't need to be reminded what they are. But I think that the society that amongst which we live has found a way. Hannibal, uh, uh, hold on a second here. My dog's having a moment in the sun. Anyway, thank you for your patience. I'll get back. <laughs> she threw me off. <laughs> so I'm going to get back to this link. This has been kind of cool. Uh, okay, now I found out where I was. However, initiating an attack, regardless of the intended purpose of that attack, runs directly against the voluntarist philosophy. For example, if there is a strong suspicion, see, this is kind of the shit I don't like. Strong suspicion. Because I'm blind, right? And let's say that my suspicion was based on something I saw. Well, my vision's only good up to a certain physical distance with my glasses, depending on if I'm using my reading glasses or my not reading glasses. So if I'm wearing reading glasses, they're only good for a, about three feet where I can really see clearly. And then after that, it's, uh, 
I'm familiar with my surroundings and whatnot, so that helps a lot. But to say I can visually see it is kind of it's in your it's in my mind that I can because I wear the glasses all the time. But if I don't wear the glasses, I can't read the screen in front of me. It's very uh, disturbing to have bad eyesight, you know. But we've got, I don't know, we just deal with the problems that we have in our day. Mm. I get back to my story now. <clears throat> Excuse me for that rant. Uh, but he keeps bringing up, you know, if there is a strong suspicion that a neighboring regime is amassing for an attack... Ah, oh, come on, strong. All right. The voluntarist response would not be to preemptively attack the regime, but rather to ensure that all grievances are dealt with and restitution made for any wrongdoings. Right. But always the assumption, this is what we've become. They raise us to look for the negative first. <laughs> that's that's exactly the opposite of how I physically live my you know my mental life in 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 a day. I don't run around being all negative and worried about the the attack that's going to come and oh the end of the world and oh we're going to get nuked and all. I don't have time for all that. But there's places in the world where the society creates that mess so that you have to endure that or get the fuck out. <laughs> Nobody goes anywhere. Everything's too conglomerated. What else do they They just sucked everything up. They stole all the freaking land. They own everything that you touch, and either you pay them to use it or you don't. Wow. <laughs> and then reading this uh, story just making me come in and out of reality i i got an opinion about every fucking word <laughs> but it's the violence thing i don't have that with me anymore it's not a fresh memory to be violent with anyone it's old old stuff and this kind of reminds me of the days when i would uh like pick on my little brother when he was growing up anyway i will continue with <laughs> freedom bombs if the yeah, yeah i already got that part there strength that uh it would probably also be wise to inform the regime that these defenses are not for the purpose of launching an attack so as to minimize the chances of an arms race well see it's all that mumbo jumbo talk thrown in with a really good idea like if you're being forced to do something, it's not good. Don't, no, don't do this. But that's not the message. To me, the message is be aware, be worried, be paranoid of the attack is coming, you know, because everybody saw how Waco ended. And uh, the people that didn't survive it didn't probably do so good. I mean, not by my standards anyway. And all that over a couple of guns. Yeah, I mean, just think about it. just a couple of guns started all that shit between some religion editors and the government. And I can't really see the difference between the two. I think government is just as far fetched of a control game as religion is. And it all comes through with all this regulation and this and that. Little kids can't open a lemonade stand and make a buck in their damn street because some moron is worried about getting poisoned by the neighbor's kid. Okay. I mean, wow. If, if that's the best we can do. So anyhow, what I, I guess I don't live in a society that works that way. Their commerce is pretty much uh, regulated and controlled by the government, but there's not a lot of like uh, freelancing out in the public eye, people that are doing like lemonade stands. I haven't seen anything like that so far, but give me a second here. But... Ah, wow, this story tonight just got my mind all rattled and rolling all over the place.
But then I, I guess I'm reading what how I interpret the story. And I see the good and the bad in the story. Because they're using uh, really negative ideas to prove that you don't need uh, violence. Well, I don't think that works to people either. I don't know what it would take for somebody to wake up to the reality that violence is a choice that you make. It's not, well, of course, now with enforcement, you're forced into making that choice. See, so, uh, I don't think, I don't think defending yourself is any less violent because if I'm defending myself, I'm going to try to fuck you up. That's what I remember trying to do. I Now I just don't run into those situations. But if I should, I'm, I'm not the flight kind of fucker. I'm, you know, I want to walk away from this, not, not run away. So let's see what happens. And no, I can't count the, it's been so long since those days. But reading this stuff brings all that defense and fighting and winning and holding your ground and na 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 boo doo boo blah, blah. Just a bunch of shit in the long... <laughs> See? So what I figured out for myself later on in life was that I was just raised under with wrong information. What I needed as an artist, I did not learn until I was an adult, I don't think. Now, I think I learned some things along the way that helped, but not much that was useful when I became an artist. It was like, hmm. oh, I see. You just got to be old enough to cash a check. <laughs> anyway, I'll get back to my story. But I wanted to interject my, what is, I guess my personal input, because, you know, that's, when I read it on the on a program I'm doing, I would assume that the person listening might just consider for a moment that I'm pitching the link. And I felt that, well, some of the stuff sets right with me and some of it doesn't. Then I don't know what the chat rooms, I don't think anybody's with me today. We had a quiet chat room. Oh, no, Woody's in there and Grimner and couple of the bots are playing around so there's something going on but i will get back to my epic tale on voluntarism as you will probably have noticed from the above conclusions the main opponent of voluntarism is government that <laughs> that <laughs> oh boy this may come as a shock to those who considered the definition of voluntarism given in the first section to be a good definition of morality. <laughs> There's no such thing. If voluntarism is synonymous with morality, then the opposite of voluntarism must also be the opposite of morality, which makes government inherently immoral. <laughs> there, wow, this, it's a nice story. I'm having fun reading this shit, but my mind goes probably way different places than other people. Anyway, to continue with my epic saga this evening on 20% off, this is not to say that all the things that government does are necessarily immoral, but rather that the manner in which these th things are done is immoral. Well, they, there's a quote. i to quote that one, Grimmer. For example, providing welfare for the disabled would seem to be a very moral activity, and this is indeed something which governments do do <laughs> however the manner by which the welfare money is obtained to give to the disabled is of vital importance governments obtain their money either through taxation or legal tender laws and the printing of money inflation both of which require 
the inflation of <laughs> the inflation, <laughs> the initiation of force. <laughs> I'm losing my mind here. So the only moral action to take with this money is to return it to its victims. Wow. In section three, I will refute the objection that the poor and disabled would go without welfare in a voluntary society. Oh, yeah. Well, I think so, too. I I think that we'd be better off without a sitting standard ruling class of superior fucking morons that couldn't change a flat tire if they had to. So, yeah, I don't put all my fucking faith in them. <coughs> and I'm going to follow them to the promised land and be free. <laughs> okay. How can it, okay, this is what I never understood when I was even young. I would ask, okay, if you've got all this backup and all this shit behind you, where does the freedom part come in? Because if you want to leave and go somewhere, you've got all this shit to drag around with you. How the fuck do you think you're free? <laughs> you're not free. You're bound to this mess. And unfortunately, um, I know I'm laughing about it, but I've outlived most of my opposition from my youth. Um, <laughs> people, people didn't think I was going to live. I didn't think I was going to make it this far in life, age-wise. And uh, I outlived, I outlived a lot of naysayers so far. And it, it's not amusing to the point of laughing. It's that nervous, uncomfortable. You don't know what to, how to behave about a horrible thing like that, but it kind of justifies the, you know, they told me I wouldn't, they would, they didn't, I'm here, but nobody knows that except me. <laughs> so I, it just, part of that, that distant way that I see the machine playing out, the game it's playing, and for the reasons it's doing it, it's just st stupid but everybody wants to be a billionaire so there's your there's your problem right there if it wasn't for the greed and i need to be a billionaire and buy me a senator well why <laughs> you just being greedy okay back back to the story i i should know i shouldn't laugh when i'm doing a serious thing but i'm telling you it's that nervous i don't know what to do with myself with my, the way my mind is reading this information back to the story it also bears mentioning here that anarchy can mean different things to different people no it can't some people associate anarchy with chaos that's cuz they're mis they're taught the wrong thing Indeed, this is a typical usage of the word, while others associate anarchy with a lack of private property communism. No, wrong again. However, when I say anarchy in this essay, I simply mean no government. This does not mean no rules, but rather no involuntary rulers. Voluntarism, of course, permits people to voluntarily subjugate themselves to rulers. For example, a person, a personal trainer, oh, come on, Hannibal, uh, is a, I got my cat going crazy next to me, probably hairballing or something. Oh, what a night. A personal trainer is a form of ruler and so can be an employer however it is the rulers who have not been appointed in a directly consensual manner who are legitimate under voluntarism yeah i i but see then what do you do with the the guy that's not part of your voluntary society that's a invader See, no matter what we have, we've been trained and taught and fueled and <laughs> informed so that we will not trust the other guy. 
That's the last thing you want to do is be in a weak position against your enemy. And never forget, everybody's your enemy. You can't win. <laughs> what are you, nuts? <laughs> well, that's that's the way I see this game anyway. Maybe you don't see it that way so much. Maybe you see it that way more. Who is to know? By this stage, you may be feeling fairly shocked. My guess is that you had never considered things such as drug prohibition taxation or mandatory conscription to be immoral and unless you are in a tiny minority i am fairly certain oh my night's gone <laughs> okay i lost my place looking over at the animals ah let me find my I know I said I am fairly certain that you have never considered anarchy to be moral. The sad fact is that the most powerful people in the world in which we live write laws which directly contravene the voluntarist philosophy. However, Voluntarism is somewhat vindicated by the fact that the average person interacting with their friends or buying things at the shops or just going about their everyday life is already acting according to the voluntarist philosophy. Yeah, I see, I think that big plus where I'm at is the lack of the enforcement. You know, I haven't seen a cop in probably six months. It's been a long damn time. And when I was at the bar drinking, the bartender was uh, commenting about, well, the bikers take care of this shit. Whatever this shit was, I wasn't completely involved in the conversation and just kind of overheard that bit. And, wow, okay. Uh, but as a result of not having enforcement, you're going to find... Uh, what would you call it? Um, not renegades, but... You know, like the guys that went down to Bundy. And they were armed and they were ready to fight. They just didn't want to. But they were they were there. Well, that's what these biker clubs do. You know, they don't want to do... They don't want to take care of anybody. But they will if they have to. And that's the price everybody in this area, I think, pays for the privilege of being free of the uh, uniforms and the badges as much as we are. And it's so crime, you know, crime free up this way that months can go by without even seeing police presence. And in that period of time, maybe the kids acted up a little bit and spray painted something or they're, you know they're kids kids do stupid shit but the stupid shit here is very minuscule compared to the stupid shit i did when i was a teenager but that's a whole nother thing that's door table material not in uh 20 off while i'm reading about voluntarism by this stage no i read read that ah, ah. three responses to common objections to voluntaryism. I will start this section with a brief discussion on a couple of the positive aspects of human nature. Namely, human compassion for others who are less fortunate than ourselves. Uh, some people don't have that. And the human tendency to work to improve our own lives, both via individual creativity and via cooperation with others yeah those are the two that uh, yeah as far as survival in life uh, my creative side has always opened up friendships with the people that were also creative so I've had a lifetime of being around other artists and not only uh, like people that drew cartoons no 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 just being an artist opened up a whole lot. I had a friend once. I, he, he was a sculptor. He carved in wood, and he was making this f like firehead 
you know, where the wind or something blowing, and it was really weird. It looked like a face. It was a, a male face with a lot of hair, and the carving was supposed to make it look like it was blowing in the wind and on fire and all this, and it kind of came across <laughs> in the carving. And Well, there you go. I, I can't carve. I'm just terrible with blades. I can cut stuff up and, you know, use it for specific things but to take something out <laughs> and make a picture out of it no that's beyond my scope but i've got the ability to appreciate it when i see other people do you know creative things like that and for whatever reason in my life i've just always been around people that did you know, artwork and they say water seeks its own level so eh Let's get back to the story, and I'll quit bragging about my wonderful life. Just as almost all humans have two legs and two arms, so almost all humans feel compassion for each other. No, we don't. Researchers at, see, researchers at Princeton University have found that the human brain seems wired up to respond to others' suffering. Why put the fucking emphasis on suffering to prove compassion? <laughs> I mean, uh, to me, it's just like a word game, and they set you up with something, and, but no, you got to hear this nasty part first. Because <laughs> that's what we're, you know, that's what we do. We are some violent, nasty fucking life forms. I am telling you. Oh. But, there's room for improvement, I would say. If if you feel there's a need for improvement in something, then there is a need for improvement. Now, if you like some mongoloid and you're out there beating people with baseball bats and gets you off and you like that shit, well, you're not listening to this program. <laughs> it's making fun of the cops. <laughs> Being a smart ass on 20% off. Okay, back to the story. They found that helping others triggers activity in the caudate nucleus. I'm not sure. I've never read that before. And anterior cingulate. Okay. Portions of the brain that turn on what people receive rewards or experience pleasure. Whoa. I must have that going on like. 80% of the time then because I mean even putting my puzzle together gives me a sense of satisfaction <laughs> when I beat my little kitty games on the internet I'm hooked on and I play them every day uh, I get a sense of satisfaction when I figure out how to beat that stupid game go figure you know and it's the same thing with everything a cup of key a cup of coffee a glass of tea a cigarette whatever uh thing whatever prop i'm using for the next high works and most of it's all in my head anyway so least i am not thinking that it's you know that a man that uh, invisible guy in the sky watching over me because i'm gonna be one of his favorites someday and sit at his feet and wash his toenails <laughs> don't i don't believe in all that stuff but what I do believe is whatever we are, it's very freaking complicated. Human beings are not simple to explain. But we keep trying. Oh, we know everything. We're going to explain the solar system and the universe and the blah, blah, blah. You can't even explain yourself. <laughs> you can't tell me what you're mad at me for. You're just mad, whoever, you know, at the time if that was appropriate. And the other person really doesn't know. And they, they think they know. And if you ask them that at the time, they'll just get more angry at you. But if you ask them that same question a week later, you remember Tuesday when you are all mad at me? You remember what that was all about? And then your, your other partner will go, no, because <laughs> it's over. It's gone. It doesn't matter. It mattered at that time. when, <laughs> Right, honey? When... When we're disagreeing, yeah, like when I give her shit about the globe, she doesn't yell at me about it or anything, but I can see that 
eyeball rolling. <laughs> she doesn't know if I'm just... Nobody knows what to make of me about this globe thing. And I just tell them the same old thing. I don't really know. Do you really know? <laughs> if you really know, why, why is what you know not proof enough to prove to me so I can go, Hey, I know. Not, I think I know. <laughs> Back to the story. I was picking on my poor little wife for just a moment. Um, let's see. This is a rather remarkable finding. Helping others brings the same pleasure we get from the gratification of personal desire. Ooh. While it may be rare for someone to devote their entire life solely to helping others, it is not rare for a large number of people to devote a much smaller amount of effort to helping their fellow man. Thousand people donating their time and effort for merely an hour each week have a far greater effect than a single Mother Teresa diligently devoting every hour of her life to the same cause. Well, don't... Uh, I'm not a Mother Teresa fan. Do a little research on that one. Oh, the things that you find out you were lied to about as an adult. When you are you know, when you were a child, they told you all these stories. Make-believe shit. And then one day... There you are, you're a grown man, and you look and you go, hey, wait a minute, this isn't what they told me in 1970. Let's see what this says. <laughs> and, well, and, and the reason I keep harping on that is when I compare the results to the two stories, it fits one story, but it doesn't fit both of them. So, is that, you know, my interpretation, or is that what everybody of course, everybody sees everything I see the same way I see it. <laughs> I'm special. Anyway, another positive aspect of human nature is the human tendency to work to the hu uh, to work to improve one's own life. In its most basic form. This trait is essential for human survival. Examples include working to feed oneself, clothe oneself, and shelter oneself from harsh environments. See, include working to, because to exist in the world, we are expected to work right. Not create or um, be a part of, but to compete for the fucking very nature of existence. You got to go out there and fight other people to get a job. You know? And then you got to perform at this job so that the guy that you work for doesn't fire your ass and replace you with somebody else. <laughs> so, well, and and when I was young doing these things, I don't think I was so much aware in my teens and my 20s about the dynamics of being a debt slave. I knew that whatever it was, I didn't call it that. I was just antisocial in the, uh, <laughs> I don't want to grow up like, like you guys all did. No, 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 no. I'm going to do something different. And whatever the hell it was, I did something different. <laughs> it wasn't popular. It wasn't taken well by a lot of people. But I did what I wanted to do. So the the living to be free will cost you everything you, you've got to be free. So at some point in freedom, you've got to either, well, to not to not be free is <laughs> is to be where I'm at now. You belong in something with others or in a marriage, whatever it would involve other people, maybe your family. I don't get along good with uh, what family I have left, so uh, I'm a difficult personality, but uh, I'm more of a voluntarist 
then I am a, a victim of the system because I learned a lot of tricks along the way to avoid the punishment of the man because come out of the hippie days. I was younger, but because I played along as though I was a little older, people, <laughs> they didn't question it. They say, well, what are you, about 14, 15? I say, yeah, just turned 14. How'd you know? <laughs> I was 12. But because of the associating with smarter people and older kids all that time, I fit right in. <laughs> it was it was the strange, I don't know. I never had a peer's, uh, I had a best friend for a long time, but he was, he was not, uh, I, I guess, the reason we were best friends was because we were so free of everything else. But me and him were very different. Uh, the He was like, it was like the odd couple. I was Felix and he was Oscar. <laughs> and Joe, that's just the way he rolled. Even when uh, we got old enough to have cars, his car was a mess, my car Whatever it was, it was at least neat and clean, and, but not Joe. Joe didn't give a shit about the aesthetics and how things looked. He just wanted power. He wanted a fast machine that nobody would see coming, and that's what he got. But me, I, I'm way different than that. Anyhow, um, so now I'm going to get back to this epic story and <laughs> I keep interrupting it with my marijuana mind. Uh, where did I leave off? Uh, examples, I believe. Yes, examples include the development of the of the A combine. Okay. Development of the A combine harvester. I guess that's the name of it or development of a <laughs> somebody added a word which enables a single farmer to do the same amount of work previously requiring thousands of people <laughs> there you go planned obsolescence out the door with you lazy lettuce pickers we don't need you no more go live in a city and draw welfare the development of medical equipment and techniques which have helped extend the human lifespan from less than 30 years to over 75 years and a supersonic air travel which can transport people from one side of the globe to the other in under a day to name a small fraction of human accomplishments. Eh, I'm not impressed with any of that so far. All of these accomplishments are due to individual and collaborative human creativity. I don't think so. It also bears mentioning that the coercion has never been necessary for the development of inventions. I don't believe that. People do not need a gun to their head to develop innovative things. I don't agree with that. They will do so both because they find it fulfilling and because the rewards are great. Well, yeah, in the utopian world of the voluntarianism is uh, sure that's how things would be, but the reality of how things are is horrible. Crying out loud, they demonized hemp because it was a cousin of the devil's lettuce, which now is a remarkable find. Oh, look what we just discovered the other day. Well, how could we have been so wrong all those years ago and demonized the most useful plants on the planet and destroyed so many people's lives for using it anyway? <laughs> and that's mostly just the flower part of it. I'm not even to the hemp yet. But Levi's is going to lead the road to recovery in the hemp market and bring us back. <laughs> no, they're not. They're going to drag this shit out. For... They want to sell oil. That's what these people do. I have never yet found anybody that completely agrees with this particular point of decision I've come to. Is that everything that we physically do in life is based around oil and synthetics and shit and garbage that you couldn't sell it on a free market. So what we've got is 
the illusion of a free market. We've got something called a free market, but we're playing with fiat currency. Uh, we're living in psycho lands under psychotic people that are doing psychotic things. And it's getting worse instead better. I don't remember mandated inoculations by the state when I was living in the States. I don't know where this mandated, you know, people are in frenzies over uh, a childhood disease like uh, like measles, right? But I think what we're forgetting or overlooking is the the two generations, that, well, yeah, two, 20 years is a generation. So the, the two generations that have passed since I was a child have been bullshitted, misled, lied to, TV'd, and vaccinated for their own good. And the outcome is worse than the outcome from my era. They say like uh, one out of one out of two uh Adults, 18 years old and up, are on some kind of medication. I might be wrong on that, but I believe I read that. So if I, you know, I'm going to go over to the chitter chatter room and maybe just mumble jumble through the rest of the show. I got an hour. I can do an hour standing on my head talking about my cat because that's the way I roll. Twenty <laughs> percent off. Uh, poor Goober is so mad at me because I don't like him and his friend picking on people all the time. So I pick on them back. Oi, I'm sorry I opened up the chat now. If all I'm going to see is my worthy adversary is slapping me around on the chitter chatter room. Come on over to the RLM. <laughs> Get a name and jump in there. Bash me upside the head with your words. It really doesn't work, but have fun. Until I get bored and I'm going to use the Iggy, but enjoy yourself. We all have our own opinions about such, this, that, and the other in life. And some people like to sell you their, you know, pitch you their ideas about how things should be and what this should be and how that should be. And I've come to the decision that my three-step plan to unfuck the world is guaranteed to work and I can prove it. <laughs> but sadly, the, the world we live in isn't ready for what I want to do yet. So, because of the world not being ready, I found a little pocket of the world where that kind of mentality already existed way before I ever got here. People are just basically nice to each other, trying to get through their freaking day, if they're working or whatever responsibility they have, and they're trying not to kill anybody else on the way from point A to point B. And it's really cool. <laughs> I mean, jeez. I get the biggest kick out of the simplest crap now. I enjoy going to the damn grocery. I was in the grocery store tonight to go because I wanted my milk for my coffee. I'm a little fussy about that. And then, uh, I, boy, I'll I'll let it go. And then I forget and this, that, and the other. And I need to get two bags of coffee so that I don't forget. To get one because I'm getting old and and I get down to the store, if I don't have a list in my pocket, I forget what I went there for. But tonight, I was in one of those rare moods where I knew what I was doing, I knew why I was there, and it was more uh, of a thing about, I'm going to get cat treats, and I'm going to get some cookies, Cirque likes these certain cookies, <laughs> and I'm going to get some do get the dog a bone. And it struck, you know, it's kind of little things like that, that when I'm aware of other people enough to go do my little thing, that selfish thing about the milk for the coffee, I like fresh milk. I don't know, big obsession with that one. And uh, anyway, but when I'm there, I got my stuff. And then right after, hey, what about the wife and the cat and the dog? And I don't come from that land. I come from me first and then you, baby. 
You back up. I'm a numero uno here, not you. <laughs> and now I don't give a shit what number I am. I don't care if I'm the fourth in line or the last in line. I, there's no time for me left, you know, to dwell on those um, defensive, violent games. <laughs> They're violent too. Mental shit can get nasty. Rob and um, Rob and Vinny got into it on Tuesday night, and I saw they they came to terms and they're buddies again, but. <laughs> this, their personalities are night and day. One's this way, the other one's that way, and then they clash. And it's it's never dull and boring with uh, Rob and Vincent. But then I like them both, so I I guess I'm prejudiced. But there's a few other people that ah, I for whatever personal reasons we don't connect. There's something. Uh, uh, so a lack of something when I don't connect with people, I think. Uh, what they say and what they do um, doesn't, or what they claim they say they do, doesn't seem to, doesn't make sense to me somehow. Judgment, uh, experience, you know, we all look at the things in life with our own knowledge. And it's really hard to justify, too, that I'm going to use my knowledge about that to decide about you and wow maybe my knowledge about that particular thing isn't so strong you know you don't know you're just experimenting in this electronic verbal visual thing called life and nobody knows what they're doing they all claim they know what they're doing oh yeah i know what i'm doing what are you doing uh i don't know <laughs> it's, there's your conversation about what are you doing. You know, well, maybe not with everybody, but I would say a good... I've done that myself, because I know that from experience. Oh, what do you got? What do you want to do? I don't know. Uh, what do you want to do? Well, I don't know. Well, somebody has to make a move somewhere in life. That's what I learned from the I don't know statement. <laughs> And somehow on this internet thing, it's whoever types it first wins. <laughs> I don't know what they win. I see people thinking they're they're arguing on the internet. I even accuse Circa of that sometimes because I read what she writes and I go, wow, <laughs> oh my God. That could be interpreted. Of course, I'm reading it with my opinion. So I'm thinking, oh boy, this can be interpreted so many different ways, you innocent little Danish woman, you. <laughs> well, I don't think you're malicious about the way you write, but some of the stuff that you say could be interpreted as that. You had to apologize to Moose because <laughs> that one thing you checked into got, wow, that went all the way to the, to the, wow, to the bad place. <laughs> the bad place it went to hell is where it went anyway but it was an accident i would, wouldn't in you know uh, in putting input into the computer not knowing what you're going to get in response is kind of yeah, i like that that's it, that's interesting to me the results not so much interesting. Once I've read it and then it hits me what it said, uh, sometimes I wish I didn't read some of the things I read. <laughs> Grimner won the internet. No, you didn't. The internet is a curse. You don't want the internet. I'll tell you what you want, and then for 20% off, I'll get you two of them. <laughs> I'll tell you what it is when your check clears. Make it out to cash. <laughs> Pick a number, any number, and deduct 20%. That's what it's going to cost you. Anyway, <laughs> uh, somebody slapped me with a trout. I'm getting punked on the reallibertymedia.com chat room. Well, that's pretty cool. I mean, when you think about it, being as nobody really knows, you know, physically except Cirque, the rest of you guys don't know me. I could be like six foot five and weigh 300 pounds and be like a gorilla pretending to be a little tiny small guy. But you don't know that unless 
you trust that I've told you the truth all along? Huh? 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 Or do you think maybe, maybe I'm not? Could that be? <laughs> I would say in this time in life right now, for anybody to be this happy has got to seem a little strange. Uh, and a lot of the stuff I've read about over you know the last 50 years, give or take, the stuff I remember, I remember reading certain things about eight years old, but not anything before that. But I remember reading my first Edgar Allan Poe story. I was eight. Because my mom and me made a big deal out of it. So I would remember it. So I remember it. And I also remember is watching Oliver Twist. Because my mother was English. Now I say was because she's not English anymore. <laughs> uh, I don't know what she is now. Maybe they promoted her or something. Gave her a better seat on the boat. Um. Uh, Anyway, but yeah, she made me stay up one it was late on a school night. I remember her coming in, getting me away from my brother. We shared a room at that point. She says, uh, I want you to watch this film. And it turns out, of course, I grow up and find out about, oh, yeah, she was from the east end of London. Oh, this is where, you know, this is where she was from her childhood, blah, blah, blah. But not in that period of time. But the same thing. England's England. If you've been to England once, you've been to England one time too many. I don't... Uh, I've traveled enough to, I guess, be disappointed in places that turned into what they turned into since the time I visited them. Because I was lucky. I was traveling in a period of time when everything was an instant. That all came when I was all finished. When I was done, well, not done. I went to Denmark and Scotland, but uh, those those two particular decisions weren't made in a the normal fashion that I would make a decision to travel somewhere. The first one was family oriented, and I gave in to do the right thing for everybody involved. After uh, six months of trying to get out of going, I didn't want to do it. Then, after everything that I didn't want to see happen, happened, uh, then I ended up meeting Cirque. And now, I see, how do you know what to do in life when you don't really know what life's bringing your way? <laughs> it's a it's a hard thing to explain. Uh I don't know. I don't think I'm giving anybody advice. I'm just saying that I kept my eyes open and I paid attention to what people were saying. And this is what I've created as a result of thinking I'm following that line of idea. I met Grim on the RLM. Uh, Mary used to do radio and I got a giggle out of calling her on her show and the other people couldn't hear me, only she could hear me in her headphones, and I'd tell her some crazy jokes or whatever. And uh, that turned into the dork table. <clears throat> then the dork table was, for a long time, I had the jitters about doing radio alone. I have no, I have no memory of what that was about. It just drove me nuts to be on the radio without a script and some kind of a direction. I got to know where I'm going. But it really kind of rubs me raw to do shit like that. I really like to just do what I want. It It's like going to going for a walk. This is like a hilly, strange little neighborhood we live in. And I really prefer the flat land. I don't want to walk up and down hills anymore. I'm tired of all that crap. But other people in the family aren't. <laughs> I'm just old. Good Lord, I made it this far. I don't want to risk falling down a fucking hill and breaking my fingers like Cirque did. <laughs> I'm not crazy. <laughs> well, a little crazy, but not not in that respect. I think my craziness is more verbal than physical. My ideas are outside of the box, but my physical behavior, that's all well within the confines of the my government protected freedoms, 
by God and country. Don't you know? Well, actually, I think that's just common sense. People share a common sense about how to behave in the physical world. Certain things you don't say to people. Uh, certain behaviors you don't exhibit. You know, it's just common decency, common sense. And then I get onto the Real Liberty Media. And I meet a character on the chat room that makes a daily comment about going to a Starbucks to irritate people. And nah, no links. And I figured, man, if this guy was really doing this, he'd be all over the damn YouTube. We'd find him on BitChute. He'd be overexposed like a, you know, creepy Joe. <laughs> You can say creepy Joe in Denmark and people know you're talking about Joe Biden. Thank you, Internet. <laughs> These freaks. <laughs> They're running out of places to hide. Okay, and sure, the numbers that we have as far as people that are willing to accept the truth about our representatives... They're not representing us at all in any way, shape, or form. And then when you see how they freaking behave in public around children, if that doesn't prove it, write down. I mean, that's the last nail in that box. You're finished. When you see a grown man like that behaving that way with young females, you just... I, I would just assume it would come clear to a person at that moment that... That freak is in a position of fucking decision in matters of commerce and life. You know, they're making decisions to bomb other lands, you know, to get their oil. <laughs> These decisions don't come cheap. You got to go to Joe Biden to get a yes or a no on that. Well, in his day. Now... <laughs> <laughs> they want to keep Trump in t for the next election, so they, they're going to run Creepy Joe against him. Uh, unless that pedophile crap and uh, and all the pictures of Creepy Joe have shown people the truth about what he truly is or what they want you to think he is, because, good Lord, it is photography. I've never met the man, but I have to admit the pictures I've seen, they looked real <laughs> The kids that were, you know, in the picture with them, they looked scared. <laughs> I wasn't, I don't think I was just imagining, you know, that was my overworking mind, you know, doing a number on my brain, so I hate Creepy Joe. I really believe I saw kids that looked like, oh, ew. and I don't come from a growing up of uh, grown ups putting their freaking hands on me, hugging me, and all that kind of shit. Uh, I came from a very non-physical childhood. So if somebody had done that to me, I would have been like, hey, hey yelling, screaming, get the, f who the fuck do you think you are? That's the kind of life that uh, I I had because of circumstances, I suppose. But I look at all these other people and see uh, victim. You know, they're a victim of this and a victim of that. Didn't anybody just grow up, you know, and, and shit happened, you know. I, well, I'm not saying that I didn't have uh, adults mistreat me. That that they did on occasion. And some of them were very well aware of what they were doing. And I didn't think some of them weren't in... Uh, <laughs> How do you explain? Because I'm looking back on my side of, you know, what the adults did. And the only one that really stands out as a negative was my dad with his um, his addiction to um, <laughs> what did he what would you call that when you uh, I can't even think of it. It's been so many fucking years now, but. He was an authoritarian, had a lot of expectation. You'll do this or I'll smack this shit out of you. He was one of those types. And I was one of those types that said, oh, really? <laughs> Is that what you're going to do? Okay. And I'd take the whipping and, and not have to do whatever it is I took the whipping not to do. But as I got older, 
the game changed. And But I still don't see that the man thought he was doing anything wrong. He was uh, a product of one of those kind of childhoods. And that's what his mom did. So that's what he did. For some reason when it got to me and I was a parent, the last thing I would ever thought of doing to a kid is slapping him. It's like, wow, when I was a kid, I didn't like kid slapping another kid. It might hurt him. You know, they're all delicate. Shit, I was in a swimming pool two, three times a week for my first about 12 years, give or take. Well, not 12 years, but from like 6 to 12. And then after that, it was a little bit less frequent. But I swam a lot, and I was always active and busy. So people didn't seem to, for being so little, I don't know. People never targeted me for a, a mark, something they're going to pick on or any of that. Then again, I had a little brother I could take care of for quite a few years. So if I could handle him, I could probably handle anybody else in the neighborhood. And then when that ended, you know, I was about 16. And that might be the last physical um, fight I ever started. I was 16, and I started that one. I got into a fight later on in my 20s, but that wasn't my idea. That was somebody else in a bar. <laughs> and it wasn't a fight. He'd come bum-rushing me through the door and hit the back of my chair. But eh, then again, I've told that story on the on the dork table. But all these ideas and memories and victim of this and victim of that. And when I look at the results of so many different things, some part of me played a part in what happened. And being responsible for your end of whatever takes you out of being a victim. That's why I think with my dad, I was I was a victim because I didn't have a say in any of that for 12 years. So, by the time I took control of that mentally and decided I was going to do what I wanted to do, I think I set a president because I didn't have a lot of peers in school. Kids at school didn't want to be around me. I was that kid that got out of jail. <laughs> and it was in an innocent time when just the idea of being arrested was like, wow, you've been arrested? What the hell? <laughs> it was a big thing. <laughs> and then what it was over was so not really interesting. What would you do? I ran away from home. <clears throat> That's it? Yep. Okay, you didn't, didn't get caught stealing anything or shooting any. Nope. Just ran away from home, and the adults caught me, and they decided I'm going back home, so I'm in jail now. <laughs> that was that was my big jail story, and it was nothing. I mean, crying out loud. So, I put myself in that position as a result of standing up to an adult at a too young of an age. But I learned the lesson. It took me about a year of doing that to really understand, hey, you know, if I don't stop this, <laughs> these crazy people are going to keep locking me up for the summer. I was losing my summers to it at the second year of uh, escaping the SAR. <laughs> But anyhow, uh, I think uh, today that all these things that happened were lessons in some kind or another that brought me to this road of voluntarism you know, in the long run. Because the end explains the journey. It do, you can't figure out where the journey's going to get where you're going. And I've always been one to say, you know, I don't know where I'm going yet. Uh, I'm kind of hanging in something will come up and then Cirque popped up so now I know where I'm going <laughs> right honey see I got a yes to her out of her for that one yeah. well I don't know I was reading that the story that you sent me and it was talking about compassion right? and it says that we all have a nature you know, our nature is to be compassionate and I think our nature's been kidnapped and replaced with competition and control and winning and being number one and being a billionaire and all this crap. It's just, I don't know, I guess just at my age, 
I don't see it as being a useful tool for society to operate. I see it to be a control mechanism to take advantage of the rest of us. And there's more people than me that don't require a billion anything, not even a million anything. So just holding that idea, there's enough debt out there right now. (laughs) Why don't they just double down and fix everything? Go to hemp. Fuck it. Retool, you know, whatever. Give people shit. Fuck them. Feed them. Do whatever you got to do. But (laughs) it's we're we're doing this for promissory notes already. Why not just take it a step further and do it with hemp? Wonder what that would, and then remember the guy that made the carburetor that ran on water. These things are real, and we're fucking around with electric and solar and wind. They've buried the answer so long ago. What, 40, 50 years ago now? What, 71, I think this was. Guy made a video about it, too. Anyway, another another. thing. One of those things that the government doesn't trust us with because we'll abuse it, you know. It's not good for us. We need this oil to keep the Koch brothers in power. (laughs) Where would we be without people like Rockefeller, Koch, (laughs) good Lord Cuomo, how many families have run this damn world for how long? And they're all related to each other. They're married to somebody that's related to somebody they know. It's just a big group. It's a gang. That's what it is. And I don't like it. And my cure for them is just being ignored, ridiculed, and laughed at. But I tell you what, if they opened up the session of damn Congress and Senate with a hookah, (laughs) I bet things would change in about 24 hours. (laughs) <laughs> just don't tell them where you hid the donuts and they'll agree to anything. Get them high. <laughs> I'll do whatever you want. Just give me a donut. Okay, let's see. I need to read a little chat. I see Donna Van Meter saying Stan Myers flash. Uh, I don't. Well, I was just rambling on about who knows what. Uh, does who have a zombie fetish? <laughs> Gribner and his somebody has a oh. ah okay Java doctor was accused of being a zombie on oxy ah yeah well you just dead to have that surgery what's it been five six weeks now five I think I think it's either five or six I lost track because you know you uh. You were going to the therapy, and then uh, I don't know if I got busy doing something else, but I lost track of Java Doctor's knee. Now, he's counting the hours that his uh, pain medicine's working. Ooh, wow. They're talking about the prices of drugs. uh, Ill-gotten drugs on the streets of the United States of America. Who would imagine a thing like that? Hey. You better thank that military for being over there in Afghanistan protecting your opioids, people. Man, if it wasn't for them, you guys would be paying through the... Wait a minute, you are paying through the nose. Well, if it wasn't for them, you wouldn't get any of this shit after they got you really connected to it. (laughs) Then they cut the supply and watch you all kill each other. It's probably what they're planning. I wouldn't doubt it, and I, uh, I, I know. I don't do the Fox and the CNN thing, but I do other stuff. And I learn my knowledge from the same fucking place you do. So, you got to remember they're giving us both the positive and the negative at the same time. And then they got these algorithm things they're using on the bigger sites to decide what to send you to go read. (laughs) Like a good little slave. Yeah, that's what I understand of it. If I'm wrong, I'm sure somebody will tell me I'm insane on the RLM chat. Because we got a few RLMers having a good time talking about drugs. Because drugs are good for you. 
if you use them in small quantities over long periods of time. <laughs> Depends on your definition of a drug, too. Because uh, oh, we live in this illegal slash illegal world where because of a word, a thing is against the law. A thing, not a crime. A thing. A plant. <laughs> a, an unloaded gun is to a, a an idiot, basically, is still a gun. No, I don't never hear anybody pissing and moaning about the bullets. The bullets just always seem to be left out of the the communication. Oh, those damn guns. Oh, those damn gun owners. Not those damn bullets. They did it again. Somehow they magically got into that gun and the gun got pointed at somebody and boom, those damn bullets. <laughs> See? It's all a matter how you explain it because there's a gun lover out there that's probably going, hey, uh, that's right. <laughs> It's the bullets. It ain't the gun at all. Right. Because if you don't put bullets into a gun, you got yourself a nice shovel or a hammer. <laughs> What'd you do with it? If you didn't have bullets, what would you do with a gun? They're not real attractive. I, I, To me, I see people post all these guns. Stacks, rooms filled with them. And they come in nice glass bookcases and then i see the gun and I, ah, that that doesn't do it for me i must be one of those non-violent voluntarianists that tolerates the other guy's obsession for a sissy weapon like a gun <laughs> that must go over real good with the gun lovers too because uh, if you're defending yourself with it you got to be in fear. So to be in fear, I don't think being in fear is a very manly position to take in this life. I mean, what are you afraid of? That fellow might shoot me. So he might. What do you mean he might? Don't you see him pointing that gun at me? <laughs> no, I don't. But I read about it constantly. All my life, newspapers to the internet, every day there's something on the internet or the newspaper from my old days about gun violence, guns, 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 kill, 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 blah, blah, blah. So I think it's not the really the gun that matters. It's the daily pounding in your face about all the shit that people do with guns. Then hell, try watching movies sometimes. I don't I don't think I've seen a movie in four years that didn't have a gun in it. That's or a TV show. There's always somewhere in it they sneak in like a cop or a bad guy and they everybody's got guns. I'm gonna have to wonder about everybody now with their guns and be afraid. Fear, 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 fear. That's what we're good at. And we ain't we ain't got it mastered, though. <laughs> well, I don't know. I'm looking at my cat, right? He's just laying there. And if I move this towel that I have, he'll start fighting the towel. But he'll not grab my arm if I'm smart and I do it properly. you just got to stay far enough away from the cat so the cat doesn't hurt me in his playful attack back. Well, people aren't like that. People, I don't think you got to stay far enough away from them. That just gives them a better shot. I think the answer to gun violence is to get right close to your gun attacker and take his gun away from him. <laughs> it sounds insane. I'm positive this sounds crazy. But to me, my experience with other people and guns the further away i was from them the better chance they had with me not the closer so you go into the gun you go away from the knife into the gun away from the knife the politicians don't worry they're there to help you 
huh, Vinny? <laughs> Vinny knows all about that. <laughs> he's all he's all about his name. He just walks in the room. <laughs> it's my show now, everybody. Welcome to the Vinny Show. <laughs> I'm just having a giggle. Anyway, I'm glad you and Rob's uh, Rob Works got your little thing sorted out. You crazy RLMers and your disagreements about politics and such. Wonder what that's about. Mm -hmm. Anybody got any ideas about why we disagree on stupid things that don't matter? You know, <laughs> the more I think about it, right? When I agree with you on the internet, it's the same as disagreeing with you on the internet doesn't have any balance any value any change my mind is still made up about the topic but what you say about that topic is that supposed to really sway my thinking am i supposed to magically see the thing differently because somebody else agrees with it <laughs> you don't need to agree with the truth and I feel that I'm dealing in my mind and with the way I speak about it. Anyhow, the best version of the truth there there is available to me. You know, uh, of course, we're going off memory and we're going off how I perceive the world, and that's not going to be the way you guys do. I think at the very best, some people uh, you know agree with something, but it doesn't really matter. And it says, why would you have a fear if you are properly armed, flash somebody? Well, see, I don't, I'm not f fearful without the arms. I mean, I still, geez, I go nuts when the cat wants to get out. And I have to unlock the door because the cat wants to go out and he can't unlock the door. <laughs> he needs me to do that. But it's my wife that locks the door. She's a city dweller. That's what she's done. She's lived alone, blah, 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 in the city, uh, blah, blah, blah. So, so have I, but locking the door to me, if I was on the other side of that door and I wanted to get in, locking it is just an inconvenience that I can bypass. So, to me, it's just... <laughs> doesn't serve any purpose if whoever's on the other side of the door wants to get into it they're going to but <laughs> that's me Oy. and and i've lived in some crazy places with like uh, doors locks at the the main part to get into the building had a buzzer to get in shit like that would just drive me insane but only did it in, in i think new york san francisco it wasn't, I didn't live like that in Miami. I did more houses. I did a lot of house sitting. But I did live in, in a few apartment buildings, but Miami area was a lot different than that. And, and where I lived, they didn't have the, the locked, gated, freaking front door so you could keep the bad guys out. <laughs> I, I didn't have to do that until 86. Never even thought of living in a place where it was that crowded. Uh, I didn't go to New York until my was I in my 20s mid 20s and uh geez looking back at that what a crazy town New York was wow and now what it is today isn't that's not the same place I lived in uh I lived in midtown Manhattan and not in a real ritzy building I was on 72nd street off 72nd avenue and it was an old Old, old building. paid, And I paid nothing. It was like, oh, crying out loud. 40 bucks a week, I think. The guy wanted weekly instead of monthly. And me, it kind of worked out better that way because I didn't know from one week to the other what I was going to want to do. So I kind of enjoyed that freedom of having to live by the month. And before I knew it, though, man, there was work coming out of my ears. People were looking for me to work. and who? But that was doing remodeling shit with uh, small contractors that were working off the books. It was a fun time and to live in a city like New York. But those days have come and gone. And 
now it's like wow what i've read about it. i haven't been there since the time i'm talking about so you can't even compare it what was there when i was there most of that's all the buildings are the same but the mentality and the people have changed it's not what it's not what it used to be where are you going my dear ah are we almost that time i will be up as soon as i am done with my notes honey and me and the doctor are going to sit here and finish 20% off and ramble about nothing. i see in a bit. Anyway. Where to go with my rant tonight? I don't know. I think I get a giggle out of the uh, the gun line. And sure, uh, but... Hmm. I don't know. You'd have to see where I live and how how life is to really believe it. I'm sure that you guys got to think I'm talking out at the side of my neck. But now I don't feel threatened here about anything by anybody for any reason. And I didn't live an innocent life to, uh, you know, just wake up one day and go, hey, everybody's so wonderful. But I woke up one day and it just seemed like the people I was around were pretty damn wonderful. All of a sudden, yeah, there wasn't none of this. What I was used to didn't seem to follow me. So I want to blame it on Cirque. I think it's Cirque is put this uh, kind of shine on me to help me get along with people better in real life than uh, being a competitive winner-takes-all kind of guy. And... In the world that I came from, you can't, you really couldn't survive financially if you didn't have a little bit of, uh, what's the right word? I guess you had to be tough. You know, there's times of plenty and there were times of looking. And you never, I didn't have a plan, so I never knew what life was going to bring me financially, one way or the other, until I did it. And like I've told you before, I didn't want to get into debt to go out and do anything. So there was never any great large payoffs, just enough to survive and get through and maybe put a few bucks away for an emergency. But emergency, man, I don't know. What would you call an emergency? Uh, I don't think outside of having my foot run over, let's see, as an adult, emergency. Two hurricanes, an earthquake... And a, a accident with my foot getting run over because I was uh, <laughs> I was walking around a, a car that was parked in the, in the walk across the walkway, and then for whatever reason didn't think I guess I was listening to headphones or something and I didn't look and stepped right under. Uh, it was just insane how well it worked, and I could have just screwed this guy's life over badly if I wanted to be a prick, but. Mm. Fortunately for me, and I'm not saying for him, fortunately for me, I decided to do the right thing and not be an idiot and try to make money off this mishap that I, I very well could have been responsible for. it. I think I was. It was just my bad timing and not being completely aware of what I was doing. And the one time in life where it really did, did work against me. I don't think it had anything to do with weed. It had to do with headphones. I was listening to uh, Walkman and didn't hear the car coming. So, anyway, what has Van Meter got going on? A known species of ancient four legged whale uncovered in Peru. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I think the state should mind their own fucking business. Damn, no one. No one died. Stupid all around, but no dead rednecks. Move on. Mm, I missed part of the conversation, but I like to read a random chat from the room and see what the chatters are chitter chattering about when I'm doing my broadcast. Sometimes I don't, though. <laughs> anyway, we are scattered beyond the four winds tonight. I enjoyed the hell out of Cirque Sum contribution to 20% off but I don't know I, I was more in the mood for one of those fun stories like Rob was sending me maybe I will make an attempt 
to go out of my way to look for something particularly control oriented that I haven't read. <laughs> I don't know. We'll see what happens as the next episode of 20% Off shows and goes. And hopefully I'll be here next week to do another one. But in the meantime, there's other radio podcasts to be done by the folks at the RealLibertyMedia.com. Still looking forward to Anti coming on, doing his live radio. And I'm not a big fan of live music, but I am a big fan of live radio. And that's why one of the reasons I like the Freakers Ball, but so to get in the, boy, maybe in the summertime, it'll be bright and sunny already. It'll be different. But in the wintertime, it's really hard to get up at 5 o'clock in the morning. Even if you go to bed at 9, it's like, nah, I'm going to lay here another hour or two. <laughs> but that, I've got a computer up there, but not it's not really uh, a good set up for listening to the Freakers Ball on. When he does the music live, it's really, it's amazing. But that's, again, my opinion about the cornerstone of the Real Liberty Media radio lineup, I would suppose you call it. And I'm going to call it early. I'm going to call that a show for this week. <coughs> I don't know. As usual, scattered and mumbly, running around with memories in my head, interpreting the things I read the way I see them, and trying to pass it on to somebody else out there that might be looking for an answer or two to a question that they don't even know they have. Because these things, they you don't look for them. <laughs> they find you. Somebody comes to you and says, hey, did you know that taxation is theft? <laughs> and you, what? Are you out of your mind? Blah, 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 blah. And then the fight starts. Or the disagreement or whatever you want to call it. But in the end, what, what if you look at all the, the reality of this with an open mind and you're willing to take the shot because it's kind of insulting to realize that your government is the very thing holding you back from a comfortable life. They're not helping anybody but the government. The bigger it gets, the less help we get. Because I think that's the nature of the game. I think that's the way they designed the game to work. Hey, Vinny, good to see you. Yeah, appreciate the thanks. Thanks all to you guys out there in Radio Land and RealLibertyMedia.com, where all this crap originates from. Yeah, Donna, you're welcome. Ah, Java Doctor, everybody's being so nice. I like it when the room is nice to me and I feel good. Hmm. Well, that's most of the time anyway. I try to keep an optimistic outlook on uh, my fellows, not people and, you know, the world and I fuck all that shit. I'm only interested in the people that I deal with. And if, if it's electronic dealing with and it's done, you know, within the confines of our real liberty media protected freedoms that we all understand... Because it doesn't take much to be civil to somebody else. But when you attack and you're verbally aggressive, you get what you pay for. And <laughs> that is what I think uh, we've got the upper hand on is uh, the ability to be civilized to each other is not common anymore. These things are dying. Society's killing it. They don't want us to like each other. They want us to be fighting, pitted against each other, angry, uh, uncomfortable, wasting, using, consuming, all the negative shit. That's what the system wants you to do. And if you don't believe it, look up what an inoculation truly is and what's in one. Oh, the Rob Works is telling them, Stop being nice to me. 
See, because Rob is a sarcastic old bastard and he wants to run the world by not running the world. <laughs> My head is big enough already, says Rob Works. <laughs> well, maybe it is. Maybe it's not. And what difference does it make anyway? How big or how small or how smart or how not smart somebody may or may not be? That doesn't really matter. The things that matter in life already matter. And defining them, <laughs> it's, it's all in your mind. It's all an illusion. But we've got that physical world to convince us quite the opposite. You can be tricked into believing anything the people in seats of decision feel like tricking you into believing. <laughs> and it works. It's beautiful. It has followers in the reallibertymedia.com. And it has many people in the reallibertymedia.com that would tell the government and all its agents to go take a flying dump. Yet... The government still exists. Hmm. Wonder why. I don't think it's a matter of consensus at this point. But it's what's going on. And we're told everybody wants it. I think if everybody wants it, they're getting what they're paying for. And you're using pretend money so you're not getting nothing. Well, and the sooner you figure it out, the quicker we'll be able to get to the truth whatever the truth may be, and do something about all this disappointment. So thanks a lot for hanging out on 20% off with my craziness tonight because I was all over the board. Anyway, we've got coming up tomorrow, uh, Vinny will be doing a, I guess it will be in a Pondergander podcast. It may be called something else, but at this point, Tomorrow at 1 o'clock on the East Coast, Vinny will be doing something on the radio from the past. But I'm not sure what the what he called it. I got confused. Then after that, 7 o'clock on the East Coast on Wednesday and Friday, you got Graham Z doing the Rocket Chair podcast. 11 o'clock Friday night, we got Moose Girl and Grimner on Freaker's Ball. Then Saturday I come back, I may have a hostage, I may be solo on the dork table. I try to not know until it happens. It kind of makes it more interesting for me that way. And then Sunday morning we got Grimner comes on with the blues into the uh, trivia game. And then at 3 o'clock on the West Coast we've got Hal Anthony comes on behind the woodshed. On Monday night at 7 p.m. on the East Coast, we got grim leftovers from anything they don't do on the Freakers Ball or anything that Grimm feels like bringing up <laughs> at the time. He's, uh, he's proven to be quite unpredictable in his old age, people. You better start watching old Grimner. He he's says one... He says, I'm going to do leftovers, and then he decides to not do leftovers with no warning and no written consent from Major League Baseball. Tuesday night, 1 o'clock on the east coast of the U.S. is my personal favorite. Now, I think Vinny outdid the dork table. Uh, we've got in a perfect world, sometimes Flash and Vinny, sometimes me alone. We never know. But it's, uh, it's turning out to be something crazy. Uh, Wednesday at 7, Grammys Rocket Chair, 7 o'clock on the East Coast. Then the next week, 2 o'clock on the East Coast on Thursday, 20% off. Thanks, everybody. Roger Wilco, over and out.